Uh, next, we have Stefano Gori. Uh, Stefano is the storage group lead at CSCS. That's the Swiss National Supercomputing Center. He works in the HPC operation unit, manages a team of six people, focused on the operation of two main Cray, Synexi, and Luster file systems, and all the other related storage aspects of CSCS operations related to storage, such as backup and IBM Spectroscale. Ladies and gentlemen, please, let's uh, have a round of applause for Stefano. Hi, everyone. So he already introduced me. And if you want to know more about CSCS, you will have an, an overview now. So it will be a little bit different talk. I'm, we are really users and not developers. So you will see what a user see, what a user asks to a developer or vendors when he wants to use Luster. And I will give you an idea of the main issue we have right now and what we want to do in the next future using Luster. Then if you have questions on other aspects of our storage and ask, but I will not present in this one. So this is the main uh, standard picture of the service we provide at CSCS. So we are a, a national supercomputing center, so we provide HPC mainly to our users. As you see, we have a huge query. Starting this year, we have also two Luster file systems attached to it, and then I will tell you why. And all, both of them are Sonexion. One is the 1600, so a little bit old, but still good. And the, the last one we added this here is a 3000, and it's still the same family. All the other machines you see here are example of other little machine we have compared to the big one that is Bizdine. And each of them as a Luster has scratch file system, so each of them as a kind of black box cluster. We don't really deploy the luster, we manage the luster. So one is an NEC luster, and they deploy for us any update, but we debug for them any problem we have. And the same goes for the Cray CLFS luster that is on a Meteo machine. So the, the machine that does the Meteo forecast for Switzerland. All the other storage goes to a GPFS it's the cloud you see. It's a GPFS cloud that's moved the data from scratch to an online file system and then to tapes. So for us, Luster is mainly a kind of not volatile file system, but we don't want users to leave any files on Luster. It's real scratch. And then I will show you how we are trying to force our users to do that. So this is just going through quickly the Luster file system we have. So until last year, we had Pitstein, our Cray machine with just Sonexion 1600. And this was a problem for the high availability of the machine because with the Cray Sonexion that is at the end, the cluster Seagate, just rebranded, we had problem updating it and upgrading it. So every time we were touching the machine, we were losing like two, three days doing the upgrade. And we wouldn't, we were not really inclined to do this for the next version of the machine, the upgraded machine we had this here, because each hour we stay down as a price for the node hours we have, so we want to save that money. And we pushed our director to buy a second Sonexion. So now we have two Sonexion mainly for redundancy and high availability between the two. So if you have any issue, we will shut down one Sonexion and run on the other one, and the same for the maintenance. As you see, they are, they are a little bit different. One is more oriented for the high performance and is doing like around 140 gigabyte per second. This is the 1600, so less space, but more performance oriented. And due to the number of OSS you can see and SSU, so each SSU performs few gigabytes. So more you add, more you have in performance. And the 3000 is more dense, so you have a sensitive less number of OSS, but more capacity disk, so we have more space. And all this is attached to a machine of roughly 6,000 client nodes, plus some nodes outside that we use for other purposes, and I will show you afterwards. Each system at ASCS has always a TDS, and the same for Sonexion, so we have 
TDS for each, so next thing we have at the center. We are missing for now the 3,000 because we couldn't afford to buy a 3,000 for TDS, but we are working on it. But anyway, the 1,600 and 2,000 are there for TDS and we can try to apply any upgrade. But unfortunately for Sonexion, whatever you try, when you go at scale, it behaves differently. It's probably the same for him with any other luster, but. So you can try the basics and see, okay, it works, it goes on. But then when you go on and scale, then you face other issues, mainly network issue typically, but you face that. So the, the, the other crazy CLFS luster we have are pretty small, but this is due because the machine is really small and is not used for performance. They have to do meteor forecast and they, all the, the computation they do, it's mainly CPU related, not really IO bandwidth related, and that's more than enough. The only problem we have here that CLFS is phasing out for Cray, so they are not going to support this anymore for the next time, so we are looking for a solution how to replace it. But we need, this machine has a problem because we need to stack in, in a rack because we want to, to have this machine isolated because it's a mission critical for our country. We have to do forecasts. So whatever we will choose to replace should fit in the, the, the U where now CLFS is, so it's not easy. And that's the main issue. The other Luster file system we have is the one on a professor cluster that are meant for few professors. It's called Monk. And this one, it's an NEC, it's a standard Luster on NetApp box. Nothing special, it's, it's from the community, but it's installed with the NEC way of installing machine with their own uh, system. This is not giving particular issue, it's really a standard one. So the problem we, I was talking before, it's we introduced this service this year because we are trying to force our users to not leave um, too many files after they run on the main machine. And we, want, we don't want to use the luster quota because this has a huge impact on the performance meaning not counting the files, but enforcing it. So we are trying to work around this problem. And what we have done for, so far, it's first thing, we are giving a user a way to design a workflow where they can, in the same batch script, move data in Luster, do their calculation, and move out the data from Luster. So we added four more nodes called data movers they are in the same Slurm um, cluster. So our user can define a job for these nodes, telling them, okay, move my file from my project account in, uh, that is on GPFS to Luster, do the computation, and then move out from Luster. And they can use any tool. I'm just listing a few of them, including Grid FTP. We don't care if they want to move data out of CSCS. They can do that. Two nodes are open to the outside and they like this thing, they do uh, really often. And the other thing we did, we, every time they submit a job, we check on a DB where we basically put all the quota uh, data that Luster provides to us in a DB. We check the DB, if a user has more than 100,000 files, they cannot run. So they are forced to clean their own space. So it's a kind of trick to not enforce the quota, but be sure that they are not overusing it. I don't know, I'm curious if someone else has another solution to that. So then just raise your hand and we can discuss or offline or, I think this is a problem that many, many of us has, but. The other issue we have is cleaning policy. It's based on Robinhood, obviously. Right now it's the only policy engine that we see for Luster. So thanks to CEA, it's, we have this tool, and it works quite fine, but with the size of the system and the file system and the number of files, we have a problem with the last the version we have on Sonexion, so the change log is too slow in respect of the rate of the change of the file system, so it cannot keep the peace on updating the Robinhood database, and we were falling behind it, so we decided to stop the real-time check, and we simply do a 24-hour scan 
that is more than for enough for now, and we run the policy based on that scan. And that's it. Because every time we were trying the real time, or we were crashing the Robin Hood server, or simply was too late when the cleaning policy was running, so it was not acceptable. And we are looking forward to see if the next version of Luster and Robin Hood altogether can work better than this, because change log is not the way to go for sure. Here, also here, if someone has experience to share, I'm really open. We are looking for a solution. For now, we are doing that, but it's not the final solution, that's clear. Then I wanted to put here an example of the problem we, we saw with Luster, that this is on, a, on the small Luster we have on the Meteor machine. So basically, the Meteor guys, they are using an application that is called FeedDextra that is behaving really weird with Luster. And here I try to show, don't care about the numbers, it's just to see that when you, when you run many times this application, you have a huge variation on the time to complete the same application with the same data, doing exactly the same thing that goes from three minutes to 120 minutes. So the, the variation is really big. And after a long check, what we found is there is no problem on Luster. The metadata is not overloaded. The OST is not overloaded. OSSs are not suffering. So it's something else. And what, what we found at the end is that it's something between the, cache, the, between the kernel, Linux kernel and Luster managing the cache of the client. So basically the client was losing a lot of time just purging the cache. And I don't know if anyone is facing this problem, but the way we work around that is just cleaning the cache and regularly, and this will, the problem went away. So in the meantime, we asked our users to, could you please just recheck your application and see if you are using just old code to the, I don't know, to manage the I.O. and to allocate the memory or whatever. They did, and we got an improvement but the problem is still there. It's only like postponed by a few hours of run. So still the, the way the cache is managed by the kernel and Luster is not optimal. And to reach this, that conclusion, we were doing the test on all the file system we had, and especially the, the, the Spectrum scale GPFS didn't have the problem. And it was clear that they managed it completely different the cache. And so it's kind of, Kernel and Linux are competing for the same page or something that is introducing these delays. I don't know if you have any comment here, and I was wondering if in Luster 2.9 this is fixed or not. I don't know if someone has any experience on that. Would be nice to know. Sorry? Try? Okay. Okay, 2.10. I have to convince Cray to go to 2.10, but that's my problem as users. When you don't manage really your version of Luster, you have to convince the vendor to do it for you and move forward to the next version, and typically it takes a bit. So we will try. Then I wanted to share with you our next challenge, and it's just one slide. I don't know if any one of you has the use case coming on using object storage. I saw this morning Intel pushing DAOs. It's more or less object storage. So what we have people are asking us as user is, they want to use the SPC facility, meaning POSIX, but then they want to share their files through object on the website. And they don't want to move the data. So they are looking for an interface between the POSIX world and the object world. We are looking into Swift. OpenStack, we have something working on the GPFS side, but we want something also on the Luster side because we don't want them to move too much the file if they need it. We are talking to few peers in Europe, including CEA, for some European project. And I don't know if someone wants to share any experience on that or has any experience on that, if there is any plan, clear plan on doing this kind, there is a project called Swift on File. I don't know if this is in the plan for Luster or not. That would be great. 
because this will help a lot the SPC center, at least us. So that's what I have, and I'm open to discuss, question, whatever. Uh, I'll just say, please talk to me later. I'd like to hear about your use cases for the object storage stuff. Um, you mentioned Grid FTP. I'm from Globus, and Globus has connectors that'll talk to, for example, S3. Um, and we're also working on HTTPS access into file systems um, through the Globus Connect server. Uh, so you can get web access without having to go through SSH and Grid FTP. So I'm, I, I don't know if we're the right solution, but I would certainly like to hear what you need. Um, and see if we can help, or sure. maybe we can make some changes. Yeah, would be a nice talk. Anyone else? Questions or comments? <coughs> uh, just a comment. Um, I'm recently using a newer version of Robinhood. Uh, it, the version I'm using is the uh, 3.0-0.rc1 with MySQL 5.6, and the performance with the change log has improved significantly from previous okay. 2. Dot whatever Robinhood versions. Um, and the, the thing that we experienced was that it needed to be the MySQL 5.6 and not the 5.5, because 5.5 just didn't mesh well. But anyway, so I don't know what versions you're using, but there have been improvements in the newer versions. Which Luster version do you have? Because also that makes a difference. Um, the Luster version that we're testing on is a 2.5. OK, so because we are trying to install now the latest Robinhood, we are having issue between Robinhood version MySQL version, Red Hat version, and Offed version. <laughs> Every time we start, the node makes a suicide, more or less, without leaving any trace of any log or core, anything. So we have to roll back a bit, and we have to understand what's crashing the machine. But it's good to know that, at the end, it works better. Yeah, we did have issues with a combination of a couple of those versions that would just use so many CPU cycles that the machine would just die, um, <laughs> effectively becoming non-responsive. So the, the version matching did seem to make a difference for us. <laughs> so maybe I'll stop by and you tell me which version you have, so I can do the same metrics. Oh, we have a question in the back. I've been waiting for one of these for so long. <laughs> go, Rob, go. Uh, so this is more a comment on the uh, zone reclaim mode. Uh, what you're seeing is something I ran into as well. By When I had it enabled, I ran into issues with my MDS and had to disable it. And the other thing I was going to mention, I don't know if you looked at this, have you checked the number of partitions that are being created? on your MDS for the thread pools. I know the default behavior would create several of them, and we ended up just basically setting it to one uh, to avoid doing that, and that seemed to help us somewhat, too. The problem there is still the same. When you use the vendor box, you cannot really check that part. You open a bug, and you hope they do that check and fix it. But it's kind of standard configuration they do, and they cannot change, otherwise you are out of support, and blah, blah, blah. So I can check. I didn't check. We can try. But I'm pretty sure if we find something, then we open a bug, and it will take forever to, to get the change. Thank you. Welcome. <laughs>